Just a quick teardown on the Night Eyes bike light. So this is the product. It consists of a few things. So you have these two rubber O-rings that act like um, retention device so you can strap it onto your bike frame. And those are just straight off the shelf O-rings. Cheap way to get these parts made. They are retained on one side and open on the other side so these don't fall off. We'll talk more about that later. We have a lower housing or lower cover which is a rubber over molded part with ABS internals and a rubber seal along the top edge. We have the internals which are the electronics and then we have the upper enclosure which is a rigid ABS part presumably with a polycarbonate or an acrylic upper lens. Two pieces probably in probably ultrasonically welded or bonded with glue together as well as a rubber uh, membrane switch on this side that allows us to press the tactile switch on the PCB here. So the internal parts are as follows. We have the circuit board soldered edge edge soldered there you can see the connection point there and wired into the battery terminals we have three batteries and an internal plastic what I'm gonna call a chassis so overall that is the system and I will be doing a detailed teardown on each of these parts to help understand where all the cost is on this part so I'm just gonna quick mock up how this assembly is built. So we have the top assembly, or let's just call it the top enclosure. And that enclosure looks something like this from this side and it has kind of a, a raised portion on this side and an, a rigid enclosure that runs around the outside and on this side kind of has that button with some ridges on it. Now this piece itself is actually three pieces. So we're gonna split this up. We have a upper lens piece, which is a molded part. We have a lower lens piece or maybe we'll call this the upper enclosure. So this would be the piece that bonds together. This one is going to be black ABS. This is going to be uh, transparent or red. I'm just going to say it's acrylic for now. I don't know, but it's something transparent. And these two are bonded. And then we have a third piece. So in, in the end of this wall, right here we have another piece, which is a, this is gonna be a rubber material. And this is bonded. So we need a tool for each of these. We need a mold to make the upper lens We need a tool or a mold to make this piece, which is going to be black ABS. We need a tool or a mold to make this piece. Then we have an assembly process which brings those all together to make this what we're calling the upper housing. Then the lower housing, well, let's start with the middle. So then on the inside unit, we have a, a circuit board, which we're just going to call a PCB and it's actually a pair of PCBs because there's a, a small one on edge and these are the LEDs. And I'm just kind of uh, sketching these out just to help us understand where all the cost is coming in. So we have uh, a PCB and on top of, or the PCB is mounted on top of what we're going to call the chassis. And this chassis component, the aesthetics of this on the 
drawing are not that important, but this piece is completely non-aesthetic. Only function is to align the batteries and to align the LEDs inside of this piece. So this piece right here really doesn't need to be um, very pretty. Um, the user almost never sees it and it could be uh, a very low cost component. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that that piece is actually two pieces bonded together. So what they have here is another piece. I'm gonna just draw this as a split and I'm gonna put in four. So this is inner chassis upper and inner chassis lower. Okay, there's also two O-rings as part of the assembly. So we're just gonna throw those up here. Those can just be sourced from anywhere. This piece is the one that has those little side hooks on it, remember? So we're just gonna scribble those in here just so we don't forget. So this is the upper housing. The circuit board, the inner housing, and then the lower housing I didn't leave much room for, but this is a lower piece Okay, so this is the lower housing, and this is actually two bodies here. There's the soft rubber overmold, and there's the rigid plastic. So we're gonna call this the lower housing, which is broken up into a substrate and an overmold. And this has some little features on it as well. Anytime we have these additional features, what I'm calling um, mold features, so these are undercuts, uh, these can create increased cycle time in the mold, which slows down, increases the cost. Overmolding is a, um, is a good way at higher volume to get the features required here. But this is kind of the overall uh, part breakup of the Night Eyes bike light. So if we made a bill of materials, it might look something like this. So I bought a new one of these and just reviewing the overall assembly process for the packaging, I put together this BOM or bill of materials and I just wanna review briefly what this bill of materials looks like. So what a first appears to be a very simple little bike light project, you can see you know, all, all comes down to one SKU, which is this item on the shelf. So we end up having one part number right here, which the manufacturer will part number. Um, move these up here. And that item will get its own SKU. So this might be also called this SKU. This number right here is the one that we're going to sell on the shelf. Now, Inside of this assembly, we have the bike light, which is the assembled part inside the packaging. We have the packaging itself. We have a USB charge cable, some batteries, IFU or instructions for use, and a printed card, which is all shown inside the packaging. Now, if we start opening up each one of these things, just the packaging itself, I'm showing four separate components. I have the printed card stock on the front, the printed card stock on the rear, a blister for the front and a blister for the rear. Inside of the device itself, as I showed in the video, I have an upper enclosure, a lower enclosure, a chassis assembly, and some O-rings. Each of those we can blow down into uh, separate parts. So the upper enclosure includes a lens, uh, the upper enclosure itself, and a button. We would have labor at this level, but we don't generally track labor as an item on the bill materials that would be tracked separately. This, the lower enclosure includes the lower enclosure and the lower overmold, so two discrete materials, both need to be tracked. And then the chassis assembly is surprisingly more complex than I had initially looked into. So we have the chassis, we have what we call the PCB aligner and some screws that hold it down. 
We have the PCB main and the PCB button. Those are soldered together, so we have some solder on the bill materials. We have battery terminals. There's two different, three different types of battery terminals. There's a dual terminal and a spring terminal and a stud terminal, so three separate types, two of one, one of each of the others, and then we have some wire, and I mentioned the solder, and then we have the O-ring. So when all these components are collapsed together and assembled, all the assembly labor is traced back together, then we get left with the single skew and what I'm going to try to do over the next few weeks is try to find opportunities to shrink this build materials and reduce the overall cost.